So guys, three weeks ago, I was super excited. I had the opportunity to test out the LG Watch Sport. I say three weeks ago because that's how long I've been testing it out at this point. Now, the great big selling point of the LG Watch Sport is that it's one of the first few watches to have Android Wear 2.0. So according to the box, you have to have Android 4.3 or higher, or you have to have iOS 9.0 or higher. However, when I paired it with my iPhone 7 Plus, I had a few issues. So I completely just disregarded testing it with iPhone 7 Plus. I feel reviewing an Android Wear device with an iPhone isn't really giving it its full potential. Yes, you can use the watch with an iOS device, but really, if you have an iOS device and you're stuck in that ecosystem, you're better off going the Apple Watch route anyway. First thing I noticed when I unboxed the device, I noticed it had USB Type-C, which is really cool. Even though it's not like a smartphone, I'm loving that a lot of technology is going towards USB Type-C. Um, even like my GoPro, the GoPro Hero 5 is USB Type-C, so that's pretty cool. It's 2017, so I'm hoping every new smartphone coming out this year, at least the flagships, are USB Type-C as well. Eventually, we'll have a whole like drawer full of USB Type-C stuff. It's just going to take a while. So if you've used Android Wear before, you'll know that Android Wear 2.0 is quite a bit different. When you first start using it, it's really smooth, which is kind of shocking. The original Android Wear wasn't really known for being super smooth. Combination with the digital crown on the LG Watch Sport, it's super fluid and easy to use. However, one thing I noticed when you're using the digital crown, you would almost expect to tap the button to select things, but no. Tapping the digital crown when in a menu just backs up to the home screen. So you can't just use the digital crown completely as a navigation tool. You also have to utilize the touch screen on the watch as well, which is a little weird. I would have liked to, to be able to just use digital crown use only, but whatever. Also like the other Android Wear devices, the LG Watch Sport, sports an always on display. So you can choose to have the display always on. It's not gonna be like the same crisp, vivid display that you would always see, but it's gonna be some type of information always given to you. Whether you're using the time, a timer, maps, whatever, you're gonna have a quick glance at the information that you need at hand. Also, while we're talking about the display, the LG Watch Sport has one of the best, if not the best, display on the market right now for a smartwatch. Typically, past watches, I remember in my mind because it's kind of ironic, they have a 360 by 360 display. The LG Watch Sport has a 480 by 480. So in that so small of a screen, that actually looks really, really good. And when you pair that 480 by 480 display with that really smooth Android Wear 2.0, I'm sure it's 60 frames per second fluid action going on. That crispness with the fluidity, I'm using some big words tonight, it makes for a really good experience. And throw in that digital crown it's just a really good experience to use like i never had an issue with the watch freezing at all it was really good just no complaints in that department at all also one thing i found interesting when you have the always on display on you would think the digital crown would wake it up because you're looking and you want to just like see the time but then you want to start interacting with it you can't just start twisting the digital crown it doesn't wake it up you either have to tap the screen or press it that's just another quirk that I didn't really think made sense when you think about it from a user interface standpoint. Also, like I previously mentioned, bonus points because when you're using like a timer, that still works with the always on display. If you're using Google Maps, that shows a version of the always on display. And it's an OLED display, so only the areas that are lit up actually use battery. So if you have a completely black screen and just a few pixels are showing the time, you're not gonna use much battery life. Battery life, however, <laughs> is a sore spot for the LG Watch Sport. It never died completely on me throughout the day, but when my previous watch was the Gear S3, it's a little unforgivable. The Gear S3, I could get about three days worth of battery life. The LG Watch Sport, with LTE, with Bluetooth, with Wi-Fi, I end the day at about 20%. When I cut all that back down and just use the basics, I end the day at about 40%. Now, I don't use my watch much at all. I just kind of use it passively, glance at notifications, stuff like that. I don't really download apps. I don't use apps. So if you use it more heavily than me, you're bound to kill the watch before the day's even over. Coupled with the fact that for some reason the charger isn't as fast as I remember on the Moto 360, 
it's not just a watch where you can just throw it on the charger for a little bit and top it off before you go. If you're one that sleeps with your watch and charges it in the morning while you're getting ready, you're gonna be disappointed because you'll take it off and for one, it's probably gonna be dead after sleeping. <laughs> and then two, it's not gonna finish charging while you're getting ready for work. It's definitely one of those devices where you have to take it off at night to charge it or you're not gonna be at 100% in the morning. Also, I love all these segues. Um, sleeping with a watch, I personally couldn't do it. It's very thick. It's a lot thicker than any other smartwatch I've used. When you're using a smartwatch, especially one that's LTE compatible, they throw in so many features in there that it's gonna be thick, but this device is really, really, really thick. And when I compared it to my Moto 360, the weight even was so much heavier. It doesn't bother me at all, but when you compare the, the weight in addition to the rubber band, it definitely isn't like a luxurious device like the original Huawei watch. Even the Gear S3 with LTE bands looks a lot better than this. So this version is the AT&T version, and I just want to mention, huge shout out to AT&T. They've sent me so many devices in the past. They allow me to review devices for free in exchange for a review, which is pretty cool in my books. I don't have to buy the device anymore myself. It allows me to review more things as well. So AT&T has a feature called Number Sync, where when you get your smartwatch from them, it has its own phone number. But you can sync that number with your phone number, so when people try to call you, even if your phone isn't on, your watch will ring. So that's pretty nifty. And I'm not a type of person that's gonna be talking on my watch. I'm not trying to pretend I'm James Bond or anything. I just find it kind of odd. But in my line of work, I always feel like I have to be connected at all times. Like, I feel like someone's always trying to call me. If I don't have my phone on me at all times, I feel like I'm gonna get a phone call and then I'm gonna miss an important conversation. Even if I'm walking the dog, now that I have this watch, I can leave my phone inside and be perfectly confident that any notifications, text messages, or phone calls will ring on my wrist. And I can either choose to answer it or just ignore it and then go to my phone and talk like a normal person. Also, one really appreciated feature with Android Wear 2.0. In previous Android Wear versions, if you installed a brand new watch on your phone, it automatically looks for all the relevant apps. So say if you have like 100 apps on your phone, it's gonna look through all of them and see if there's those Android Wear counterparts. So when you're doing that initial setup, it could take forever syncing all the different apps. With Android Wear 2.0, you actually choose which apps you wanna download. There's actually a spot on the Play Store on your watch and you can choose to download whatever you want. So now you're not forced to just fill up all your storage and waste your time while they install. Pretty cool, and I also appreciate that Android Wear 2.0 is more focused on being a standalone device. So now you can browse the Play Store, you can shop for watch faces, you can shop for apps, all on your watch. Just keep in mind, like I previously mentioned, the more you do on your watch, the faster the battery life is gonna die. Ultimately, smart watches are made to be a passive device that you just keep on your wrist and you glance at when you need to look at notifications. If you are just going to waste time by browsing your watch all day, you're not gonna make it till noon in my opinion. That's all I gotta say about that guys. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the LG Watch Sport. What's your favorite watch right now in 2017? I've yet to try an Apple Watch, but I certainly would love to try one as well. So let me know in the comment section below if that's the next smart watch you want me to check out. I appreciate you watching and I appreciate everyone subscribed to my channel. We're getting so close to 30,000 subscribers. That's going to be our next goal, but you all know 100,000. I'm not stopping until I get there. Have a great day, guys. Bye.